I needed something different to play this week. Something new that I haven't experienced yet. So looking at my collection, I realized that my friend Will had bought me this game years ago and I still haven't touched it. Well, it works. And thanks, Will! Lethal Enforcers 2 puts you in the shoes of a Wild West deputy, shooting down bandits in various typical Western-style environments. This is done in the style of an arcade rail shooter, and I should mention that this is a port of the arcade game, of which I have not played. In any case, the game seems solid enough. You get to use either a controller or the Konami Justifier light gun in order to shoot the thugs that are firing at you. Both methods work well enough from what I can tell. I primarily use the controller, but I did try out a light gun. Well, if you count using a mouse and emulation a light gun, since I don't own either a Justifier or a CRT television to be able to use it. Yeah, well. So yeah, real shooter. There's really not much else to the gameplay other than that. You move from static screen to static screen. Enemies will pop out at you and attempt to attack you by firearm, knife, arrow, or hatchet. Your goal is simply kill them before they can kill you. There are no indications on how close the enemy is to striking, which is unlike many other games of the genre, such as the iconic Virtual Cop or Time Crisis games. As such, a lot of this game is going to rely on memorization. You'll need to know exactly where enemies will appear from and which ones contain the most priority due to the speed in which they strike. And that's one thing about this game. Some enemies require nearly godlike reflexes in order to kill them before they attack. There are enemies, although somewhat rare, that will fire at you immediately upon entering the screen, so it does feel unfair at times. Thankfully, you do have a life meter, and a few continues if you lose all your life points. I haven't ever seen any life power-ups, but you do get an extra life point for every thousand points. I don't feel that this is enough, but after a few playthroughs, you do get better and better and take less damage as a result. Although you don't get any life power-ups, there are a few weapons that you can find. You can get dual-wield pistols, which are both fired at the same time, instead of just giving you six extra rounds before needing to reload, which personally I think would have been a bit more useful. You can find two different rifles. A shotgun gives you a bigger shot area, although it's not much. A one-time-use rapid-firing Gatling gun and a blasting cannon are also available. The catch with those last two is that the Gatling gun runs out of ammo very quickly, but it is useful while it lasts. The cannon gives you only a small damage radius increase, and might do a bit more damage, but the cannon runs out quickly after only about 8 or so shots. The other weapons can all be reloaded and used infinitely until you take damage, after which the weapon is gone. Yes, they are nice to find, but don't get too attached to these extra weapons as you probably won't have them for too long. Depending on your control method, there are two ways to reload your weapon, which you'll need to do often. If you are using the controller, you simply need to press the C button. If you are using the justifier, you'll need to shoot off screen to reload. Obviously, a simple button press is much easier than moving your weapon to the border of the screen and then quickly readjusting your aim to any threat that is still present. So yes, the game is difficult, but I was able to persevere to get a few stages in, and the bosses can be brutal, trying tests of patience. They aren't necessarily hard, they just take way, way too many shots. And not only are you trying to make the enemy Swiss cheese, but you are also required to blast away any shots that the boss is sending your way. The stage 1 boss has a guy in a wagon that is firing 3 separate cannons at you. Stage 2 boss is also in a wagon, this time moving back and forth showing some impressive scaling in the game. This bandito is throwing barrels directly at you. The third boss is where I just cannot proceed. You are up against three guys and a showdown. I'm assuming you just need to shoot all three of them consecutively within seconds as they draw their pistols. But I just cannot do it. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong, at least from a few guides that I've seen online, but I'm just not quick enough to take them all down. And I've tried both controller and mouse, er, justifier, control methods. I just could not do it. There are five total stages from what I can tell, so at least I'm able to make it halfway, I guess? It's really a shame that I couldn't defeat these guys, because otherwise, I was really enjoying the game. I've always been a fan of rail shooters, ever since playing the original Virtual Cop on the Sega Saturn at my friend Jer's house. We did the co-op and finished the game multiple times, and had fun with it. So playing games like this has always been something I'd come back to for an hour of fun every once in a while. The game looks, well, 
Decent, I suppose. Yeah, the visuals are pretty grainy, but it kind of feels like it fits the Western theme perfectly. Enemies will take multiple shots to take down, and will react to your bullets striking them. Glass can be shattered, and some objects in the environment can be destroyed. There's really not much else to say about the visuals. As far as the sounds, you hear the normal gunshots, enemy grunts, and so on, but one thing I will admit that gets a bit annoying is the enemy taunts. Every single time an enemy shows up on the screen, they will shout something, but the lines are not too varied, and the same half dozen will be heard often. Thankfully, this is not enough to turn me away from the game. Overall, Lethal Enforcers 2 is a worthy way to kill some time. Maybe if you can get a friend to assault some rebels together, you can make it further than I could. But solo? I just couldn't beat the third level boss. Even so, I had a fun time with this one. It may not break any barriers, but it's a solid playing game in which you make more progress as you memorize the enemy layouts. Check it out if you're a real shooter fan. It's a fun one. Final score? 5 out of 7. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.